Hello and welcome to Think Watercolour. For today's demonstration uh, I want to show how I painted this simple sketch of a muddy farm track. Uh, this is an imagined scene based on my memories of many walks in the local countryside. Uh, my aim is to show you how you can produce uh, a pleasing image with a very limited palette and a little imagination. So without further ado, let's get started. I've uh, loosely sketched the uh, the idea on a sheet of Saunders Waterford uh, 300 gram rough white paper. And for the sky I'm using cerulean blue and a touch of cobalt. Just loosely painting it in, not being too fussy. I just want to show a blue sky with some uh, fluffy clouds in front coming down to the horizon. Just softening the edges with some clean water. Just added a little bit of uh, burnt sienna to the mix, a bit too much, so just watering it down a little bit and adding a bit more of the uh, blue and a touch of uh, uh, purple. Uh, just for the shadows on the clouds. Again, not being too specific, they're going to be mostly covered by the uh, the foreground trees. Just adding a little pigment here and there, just to darken some of the areas. Again, softening with some clean water. Just added a touch of sepia to the same mix, uh, just for the uh, first wash of the uh, muddy pathway. Using the side of this Escoda brush just to uh, pick up the tooth of the paper, a bit of dry brush in the foreground. Using the same colour for the underpainting for the, uh, the hedge on the left. Just added a tiny amount of jadeite green, a little bit more of the uh, cerulean blue to the mix, just for those uh, distant hills. They're going to be covered mostly by the uh, hedge and the trees, but uh, just want to suggest that there's something there. I've just uh, mixed up the same colour as the sky, just for the reflection in the puddles in the in the ruts in the uh, in the lane. Just reflecting that uh, blue sky and some patches of white as well. This is a touch of uh, sepia. It's a very light mix. Just again using the, the edge of the the side of the brush. Uh, just to pick up the tooth of the paper uh, to create a bit of texture in the foreground. Just uh, softening it a little bit uh, towards the distance. You'll see less detail there, so uh, don't need to use the uh, dry brush technique there. I've let uh, those initial washes dry and this is uh, yellow ochre and some burnt sienna just mixing them together on, on the palette just to create a variety of tones. Again this is the uh, medium wash, it's the uh, next layer and I'll get darker and darker as I go uh, go with more layers but I just want, want to have some underpainting of some uh, ochre and uh, sienna. Just added a touch of sepia to the mix just to uh, darken some of the areas. A little bit of shadowing on the ruts in the road, or track I should say. Mm. 
I've uh, cleaned the palette down and this is uh, raw umber and uh, some cobalt blue. Quite a watery mix. This is, uh, I'm using a um, number one rigger here uh, just to pick up the, using the side of the rigger just to pick up the texture of the paper for the uh, tops of the trees. Just suggesting twigs and leaves. It's a winter, wintry scene. Uh, so no uh, no green leaves anywhere. Again, as I say, just using the uh, the side of the the rigger just to pick up that tooth of the paper. Uh, I've said this many times. I, I love riggers for this because they are so springy, and you get such a uh, a lovely variety of uh, effects with it. So uh, you could use the side of a a round brush, but uh, I prefer the springiness of the uh, the rigger. When you first start out doing watercolour you try all sorts of brushes but uh, I've kind of settled on riggers for this sort of work. Just darkening some of the areas where the trees overlap so uh, you would see uh, the branches and the, uh, the tree trunks breaking up behind the leaves. I'll be painting those in later. Just using that same mix, uh, again as I said earlier, just keep, the, keep it to a limited palette and make use of the mixes that you've, uh, you've made for other things to uh, put in things like shadows on these uh, ruts in the track. Again, using the side of the rigger to pick up the tooth to create some texture in the foreground. Slowly building up from the lightest light towards the darkest darks. This is just pure sienna, quite a thick mix for the uh, tree trunks. I'm using uh, an Escoda round brush here, uh, not forgetting to put the reflection in the puddle. Switch now to uh, a rigger again, just for the uh, thinner branches. Leave gaps so that uh, the leaves show in front of the um, twigs and smaller branches show in front of the main uh, stems of the tree and the tree trunk. Don't be too specific, just um, hints of branches here and there getting thinner as you go to the top of the tree. The trick with doing these branches is knowing when to stop, otherwise you end up with a, a bit of a mess of too many branches making it look um, less realistic, shall we say. The trick is to just create an impression of the tree being there. The eye will do the rest.
Again, as I said before, using the uh, same mixtures to uh, strengthen some of the dark shadows in the foreground. Again, using the side of the rigger, just a bit of uh, dry brush, just picking up the tooth of the paper, just adding to that um, feeling of texture. The same for the hedge on the left, literally roughly uh, scraping the uh, side of the rigger. Just added a little bit of uh, burnt sienna on the left there, just varying the tones, dark and light together. It's just an impression of a hedge, I'm not painting any great detail in. Just had a bit of water on the page there, just want that out. Not being too specific uh, with this, just uh, adding touches of burnt sienna and burnt umber. Just softening the top of the hedge with uh, some clear water there just to uh, lose some of the harder edges. I don't want too many hard edges but uh, I do want to see some. Again just strengthening the uh, foreground a little bit, making it darker. Warmer, darker colours tend to come towards you and cooler and lighter shades tend to uh, recede in the painting. Aerial perspective. Again, just softening that uh, far distant part of the hedge so that it's uh, suggests that it's uh, quite a way away. Dabbing out with a paper towel there just to, uh, again, it just softens it. The idea with these uh, ruts in the track is to create some leading lines taking the eye into the painting, suggesting uh, depth. Just adding a little bit of burnt, uh, burnt sienna to those uh, branches, just a bit of variety. I thought they looked a little bit flat with the uh, bluey grey colour. Just add some, uh, some variety to the scene. A few little splatters on the page, so I'm just turning those into birds. Just adds to the uh, the rural scene. Some crows flying around, I guess. Okay, I think I'm done. I've just added uh, a little bit more reflection in that uh, puddle to show the hedge behind those three trees on the left. Other than that, it's um, finished. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. Uh, please give it a like if you found it useful and do subscribe and um, hit the notification bell for future videos and well, thanks again for watching.